So today we are going to discuss about uh, an important topic uh, which is uh, the rickets and scurvy uh, because while dealing with uh, normal nutrition I didn't discuss about vitamin D and vitamin C uh, because uh, these two vitamins are uh, extremely important for our body which results in the deficiency which results in a clinical condition called rickets and scurvy and uh, the questions regarding these areas is frequently been asked in all the areas like uh, both in clinicals and also in practicals also in uh, entrance examination and OSCEs. So, let me deal it separately. So, coming to the rickets. Rickets is basically disease of a growing bone. There will be defective mineralization of the growing bones despite of a normal collagen matrix. So, it occurs mainly in children before the fusion of epiphysis. It remains a significant problem. Rickets remains a significant problem in developing countries and mostly it is due to the nutritional vitamin D deficiency and inadequate intake of calcium. So, before going into the disease per se, first we will see about the normal vitamin D metabolism. So, if you see the metabolism of vitamin D occurs from two sources that is through the cutaneous synthesis and also uh, from the diet. If you see the cutaneous synthesis is the most, uh, most important source of vitamin D that is it depends upon the conversion of the 7 dehydroxy cholesterol in for present in the skin to the vitamin D3 which is the 3 cholecalciferol by the ultraviolet B radiation from the sun. This is the major, major important source and another is from the diet that is vitamin D2 and D3 forms in the diet which is basically rich in uh, rich vitamin D is present in the fish liver oils for example and other than that egg yolk. So, egg yolk and fish liver oil contains the high vitamin D content. So, this vitamin D2, D3 from the diet and uh, the 7 D dehydroxy cholesterol from the skin, it is vitamin D3 is formed that is 3 cholecalciferol is formed. This vitamin D3 by the action of 25 hydroxylation in the liver converted into 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol. This 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol again by the action of 1 alpha hydroxylation present in the kidneys is converted into 125 hydroxy dihydroxy cholecalciferol which is called as calcitriol. This calcitriol is the active form of vitamin D3. This is the active form. This is calcidiol which is 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol. So, if you see this 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol which is active form of vitamin D3, it has main actions on the four areas that is intestines, bones, parathyroids and kidneys. So, thereby it increases the serum calcium and phosphate levels in the body. So, this is the metabolism of the vitamin D. So, what happens when there is a vitamin D deficiency? When there is a vitamin D deficiency, less calcium is absorbed from the intestine basically. So, what happens? Automatically, the serum calcium levels decreases. The decrease in serum calcium, it stimulates the parathyroid hormone to, to produce the more serum parathyroid hormone levels. So, serum parathyroid increases. What is the action of basically parathyroid hormone is? It mobilizes the calcium phosphorus from the bone. So, more calcium phosphorus mobilization occurs from the bone and excretion of phosphorus in the urine and serum alkaline phosphatase enzyme activity increases. So, these three are the major biochemical changes that occurs uh, in case of vitamin D deficiency. So, based upon this, we can classify the vitamin D deficiency into basically calcium deficiency, phosphorus deficiency and vitamin D resistant. So, we can see one by one. That is most common cause for vitamin D deficiency is nutritional followed by malabsorption, renal rickets or hepatic rickets and uh, due to drugs like anticonvulsants, steroids, heavy metals and vitamin D dependent rickets type 1. This is basically uh, the mutation of the 1 alpha hydroxylase mutation. So, in all these areas what happens there will be calcium deficiency along with secondary hyperparathyroidism. So, this is one form of classification of vitamin D deficiency and second is primary phosphate deficiency. There is primary phosphate deficiency and there is no secondary hyperparathyroidism. So, what are all the causes? Primary hypophosphatemia, phosphate deficiency, Fanconis, 
RT that is renal tubular acidosis type 2 and oncogenic hypophosphatemia. And finally, the end organ resistant to this active form of vitamin D that is 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol that is vitamin D dependent type 2. So, basically we are classified the etiology into three forms like calcium deficiency with the secondary uh, hyperparathyroidism, phosphate deficiency with no secondary hyperparathyroidism and end organ resistant to uh, vitamin D that is vitamin D dependent type 2. So, uh, based upon this criteria we will see one by one that is vitamin D deficiency records basically vitamin D deficiency records depending upon the age of onset it is classified as congenital records from neonatal period, records of prematurity like initial 6 months, infantile is 6 months to 12 months, toddler records is between 1 to 3 years and adolescent records is more than 8 years. So, this is one type of uh, classification of records.